Welcome to Omega. Oh In this video, we are going to be talking about the solismonectomy, as coined by Dr. Jason Allen. So after putting some numbing drops into the patient's eye, you'll want to put a lid speculum in so the patient doesn't blink on you. And then, using a wax cell, you can start to remove any loose epithelium overlying the solisman nodule. As you can see here, it doesn't take too much effort. By just putting a little bit of pressure, it starts to loosen up the epithelium, and then it starts to remove actually pretty easily. Remember, a lot of patients with Salzman nodules will also have epithelial basement membrane dystrophy, so you may need to treat those areas as well. Be sure to leave about one millimeter of limbal tissue if the area you're treating is mainly EBMD. But if there's a Salzman nodule there, you will want to get all of it. Just leave the limbal tissue next to it intact. And depending on how much tissue there needs to be removed, this might take a while. So just be patient. Once you've reached the Salzman nodules themselves, you can use a foreign body spud to lift the nodules away from the tissue below. This will feel like Velcro a little bit. What's happening is that you're separating the disorganized extracellular matrix, that's the nodule, from the Bowman's layer below it. Remember that these are attached by hemidesmosomes. And you can also use tooth forceps to grab the center part of the nodule and grasp it and then peel it away to separate it as well. Both methods are very effective, just depends on how tightly the Salzman nodules are attached or adhered to the layer below it. Whenever you can, try to make sure that the surface is as smooth as possible. Obviously, it will be a little bit difficult when you're still removing a lot of the Salzman, but removing the debris or irrigating with balanced salt solution as you're going will help make the process a little bit easier as well. This patient actually had Salzman nodules in pretty much 360 degrees of the periphery, so as you can see, the area of removal is pretty extensive. Diamond burr polishing buffs the surface so that the new epithelium will grow over it nicely. The direction of the diamond burr should be towards the center of the cornea. This encourages better cell migration. When you're doing the diamond burr polishing, make sure you're only doing it up to 30 seconds max at a time. And here's a pro tip. If you let the patient know ahead of time that the diamond burr may make a sound when it touches the lid speculum, they won't be as freaked out when it happens. Almost done. The last few steps are just making sure that the surface is as smooth as possible. This may be a combination of using the wax cell to smoothen out the rest of the tissue, and maybe bringing the diamond burr back in just to buff out any irregular areas that you may have found. This patient was actually scheduled with Omega originally for a cataract evaluation, but after this treatment, she ended up actually deferring her cataract surgery because her vision had improved so much. Historically, Superficial keratectomy frequently resulted in subepithelial healing haze, which is not good. So, using cryopreserved amniotic membranes will greatly reduce unwanted scarring. At OMEG, postoperative care includes Vigamox, topical NSAID, oral pain medication, and preservative free lubrication drops as needed. Follow up is every one to two days until the epithelium heals. And that's it. Thanks for watching. OMEG Ed.